Trust the Lord. This morning I don't have a sermon. I just got something to say. <clears throat> so, I've entitled my something to say. It's time. Sometimes it's appropriate for a pastor to have a sermon and... Uh, in my mind, that's that thing, and this morning, this is the other thing. It's sometimes appropriate to talk. And once again, I wish I was talking to the nation of Canada, to everybody who identifies himself as a believer, and you bet your boots I would jump on that in a heartbeat. That'll never happen. But whatever. They need to hear this, as if I'm somebody, whatever. It's time. So, when you have an appointment, and you get an elbow in the ribs, and you're told it's time, you know what that means, right? When you know you're supposed to be somewhere, you're supposed to respond to something and someone says, it's time. You know what that means. So in our culture, those two little words, it's time, that means something. I'm going to address what's been going on in the last seven months. If you agree with me, I'm not interested in your amen. If you disagree with me, I'm not trying to change your mind. I just want to throw some things on the table that are worthy of consideration. Whether you are on this side of the fence or that side, this is just something that needs to be considered. Um, the Lord is our shepherd. Psalm 23 is our best example of a picture of uh, God wanting to be our shepherd. And, and, and there's, there's language there that illustrates very clearly how animals think, um, how a shepherd thinks. And, and, and some of the language there, if you understand animals at all, you know that a sheep will not feed or drink if it's stressed, if it's harassed, if it's harried in any way. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's sheep or any animal for that matter. Uh, they will not feed or drink if they are stressed. And um, in these days, the family, the, the flock of God is stressed. Um, uh, the, the tactic of a predator animal is to stress the animal, is to separate it from the flock or the herd. Uh, and most prey animals um, herd up or flock up. The, the tactic of a predator is to separate. Once it's separated, it is very vulnerable. It probably will go down. This is a spirit that's out there. There's a predatory voice that's out there. Uh, and, and not only is it separating the family of God, it is separating the structure that holds a country together. Uh, whether one is a, a Christian or not, there, there is a glue that holds a nation together. Uh, and, and that structure, that, that adherence, that quality that is essential is being challenged. Of all things that I do not trust and have no confidence in is human nature. I do not trust human nature. Uh, when David uh, did wrong and he was disobedient, King David I'm referring to, um, and God gave him a choice. You can either come under judgment from my hand, or you can come under judgment from neighboring kings. His choice was, God, I'll trust you. I do not trust man. 
And so it is in that day, it is in this day. And personally, I am very wary of what human nature is up to. Uh, and this, these past seven months, seven, eight months, whatever it is now, uh, what, what's going on, how human nature is, is exposing itself and, and uh, acting out, um, it begs just even a mere glance. Hallelujah. In February, this past February, Global News ran an article entitled, Five Things More Likely to Kill You in Canada than Coronavirus. These five things are cancer. Worldwide, now I'll first comment, this is very interesting. Worldwide, 9.5 million people die every year from cancer. 9.5 million. That doesn't sound like a lot. Let me help you. That's 26,000 people a day. That's almost 3,000 people per hour. In Canada, 80,000. This is 2018 Canadian statistics. I didn't come up with this after real strong coffee and chocolate. 80,000 people a year in Canada die from cancer. That's nine people per hour. That's 216 people a day. Heart-related disease, 53,000. This is in Canada. 53,000 people a year die from heart-related issues. That's six per hour. 216 sorry, 144 a day. Since you've been here this morning, six people have died from heart-related issues. Car crashes, 13,300. Statistics Canada. I didn't get this off the recent cartoon show. Statistics Canada, 13,300. And a footnote on the bottom of this item said, you are more likely to die in a car crash than you are from coronavirus. Flu and pneumonia, they lumped this one together. 8,511. In BC, in 2018, 575 suicide deaths. As of September 24th, this article is updated daily. I didn't check it today. As of three days ago, in BC, we have 229 deaths with COVID. If this does not stagger you, you need more coffee. I'd recommend putting your head sideways, pouring some in, sloshing it around, and dumping it back out. If this is not staggering, so far, you are more likely to die in a car crash than you are from this virus that has captured 
the world's attention. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying this thing cannot kill you. I'm not saying it's not a bad virus, which ones are good. But we are not losing people at six per day, per hour rather, in Canada. And worldwide, we are not losing people at 3,000 per hour. I'm not saying this virus has not been harmful and has not caused distress in families' lives. I'm merely saying something is very disproportionately being displayed. Hallelujah. And in my mind, in my heart, with respect to the mandate of the church, it just rings so loud within me, it's time, it's time. This virus is new. We've heard of it seven, eight, nine months ago. Cancer, heart-related issues, car crashes, flu, pneumonia, suicide. Well, that's been around forever, like. Cancer who? Hey, in Canada, 80,000 people per year. Nine per hour. 214. <laughs> 216. Actually, it's 219. If you want to figure in the dot. Per hour. This stuff's old hat. Cancer who? Heart disease what? This virus is new. So everybody's excited about it. No, everybody's afraid of it. So far statistically, you should be afraid of the lady who's driving the car either behind you or in front of you. I read your lips. <laughs> and if there's a man in the neighborhood with a driver's license, stay in bed. <laughs> this is silly. This is humorous. Like there's never been a flu virus before. Anyway, let's carry on. I'm not trying to change your mind if you disagree with me. I'm not looking for an amen if you do. This is stuff that needs to be on the table and considered. As far as cancer and heart issues and suicide and pneumonia and flus and well, we have a mental and emotional immunity built up to that. It's been around for so long. We don't even turn our ear. We don't even give it a moment's notice. It's just been around too long. I don't trust human nature. I'll trust a lot, but human nature is not on the list. The more people I like, sorry, the more people I meet, the more I like my horses. <laughs> Biblically, there's three levels of authority that 
that we submit to. If, if we go back, and I love having my Bible here, it's been a long seven months. If we go back to early biblical days and right through the Bible, the number one authority that we listen to is our conscience. It is built within mankind that we know what is right and wrong. We just know it. We don't need to know anything about this book, but we know what is right and wrong. The Ten Commandments are written on the heart of man. We'd never get them in order, but you know if you're going to steal something, oops. Or if you're going to do this, oops. I don't know what number it is, but I just got hit. I shouldn't be doing that. Conscience is the number one authority that has been from the beginning. The second voice of authority is the family, the family structure. As goes the family, so goes the nation. As goes the family in the house of the Lord, so goes the house of the Lord. And thirdly, is government, local government, the government of a nation. That's the third voice, and that's in biblical order. Our nation and the nation to the south of us, these are the most recent Western nations that have evolved, that have started as Western nations. Western nations only have a biblical, a Christian, Judeo foundation. Only Western nations. That's why they're Western. And our nation and the nation to the south of us no longer pay attention to the inner voice. And no longer do they give credence to the family. This government, this governmental system, whether it's representing these two countries, ours and the United States, or any of the other Western nations, which includes Europe, obviously, these governmental systems responsible for these nations no longer pay attention to the voice of God in the individual hearts of their, their people. No longer do they give attention and honor to the family structure. Human nature wants control and whether it's our governmental system or any other one and you and I in our nation our nation is a couple hundred years old we're right back where we came from we left wherever we left because we wanted something new and better that took a long time, didn't it? A couple of hundred years, and so now where do we go and start over again? Human nature wants control, wants control. And with this virus, this whole deal that's going on, there's more underfoot than just what meets the eye. Human nature wants control. 
In the good old days, eight months ago, we would sing a song, God's got an army marching through the land. Life was good. We would say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror. I have authority over scorpions, over snakes. No deadly thing can hurt me. In him I live and move and have my being. I am more than a conqueror. God's God and army. So what happened? Where's the army? Where is the more than a conqueror stuff? Where is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? What happened? If this situation would have happened after a worldwide revival like the Azusa Street one or the first or second outpouring prior to that, The church would have stood up and said, "Uh, sorry, we're not doing this. It's a long time since we had a revival. Like a hundred years of worldwide impacting revival. More than a hundred years. And this army thing somehow doesn't apply. My message to the church, it's time. It's time. I'm not advocating rebellion or shrinking the six foot rule to five. I'm just saying, church, it's time that we recognize and give credence to our mandate We are the solution to the world's problems. And it's time that we respond, that we wake up. I could write a book on excuses, why people don't go to church or whatever. I could write a book. I have a long list. And I know for sure that on a scale of one to ten, if people have a ten excuse, yes, I get to stay home. If they got a lousy excuse, oh well. Guess I better do this. This current deal for the last seven months has been a great number 10 excuse. Fabulous. You know what's disturbing? Because we haven't had a revival for so long and we're just going on fumes, there are pastors who have a number 10 excuse. Yes, we don't have to do church. That's most disturbing. Most disturbing. Hallelujah. I don't want to be misunderstood. I'm not advocating that we should rise up in rebellion against common sense and and what would be ridiculous or silly when it comes to dealing with this virus. If we should brush our teeth for dental hygiene, we'll use wisdom. 
be wise with uh, the reality of this virus as well. Just be wise. But there is a very common sense aspect to this as well. And with all the facts on the table, and with the fear and anxiety and the stress and, uh, and, and everything that's in, in our society, there's a place for the church who has always had the leading edge during crisis times. It's time the church rises up and fulfills her mandate and rises to the occasion with a voice, a voice of common sense, a voice of reality, and responds and says, we can help. I have the answer. We can help. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time. Hallelujah. Father, Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that during this time of unusual times, you are our shepherd and you will gather us and we will come together. We will be one. We will be a family. We will not be divided. And Father God, we will fulfill the mandate that we have been issued with when Jesus left to care for those who hurt pray for those who are sick we will and we will take authority over illicit false spirits and we will cast them out hallelujah we will in Jesus name Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that we have much reason to be encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a super week. Hallelujah. Be blessed.